we've really like hit a stride Kansas City has and I'm I feel so lucky to be here and be able to report on all of it not just you know the Chiefs and uh Sporting KDC is doing so many good things right now I mean Kansas City you're right it's really having like it's having such a moment hi there welcome to the Connecting KC podcast I'm Rachel Kilmer, also known as Rach the Realtor on the internet, where I love, well, connecting all things KC. I'm a metro area real estate agent, retired sports reporter, and mom, and probably too old to call myself a TikToker, but honestly, that's how we got here. You can learn more at www.rachetherealtorkc.com. But this show is all about introducing you to all of the movers and shakers, interesting people, heartfelt stories, and funny quirks that make this vibrant community home. So let's get right to it with today's episode of Connecting KC. Today's guest of Connecting Kansas City is Caroline Hogan of KSHB41. She joined the team in October of 2022 and is very happy to report be reporting in her hometown of Kansas City. After graduating from Southern Methodist University in Texas, she went straight to work for News Press Now in St. Joseph, Missouri, and has also spent some time reporting at NB26, NBC26 in Green Bay. Caroline is proud to be born and raised a Kansas Cityan and loves getting to spend more time with her family now that she's back. She's excited to live and work here after being away for several years and says it is the perfect place to be. It also doesn't hurt that she's a huge Chiefs fan and now working at the home of the Chiefs. If Caroline wants a good meal, she loves visiting Heirloom Bakery, Cafeteria, and Billy's Grocery. She likes walking around Brookside and Loose Park, preferably with her Corgi Coco. When she wants to get news from outside of KC, she downloads outlets, checks out outlets like the AP, NBC News, and CNN. But as a pop culture junkie, alerts are set for Page Six and the Daily Mail. We must take this news seriously as well. Caroline can't live without her Instagram, so be sure to find her on social media, and today here on the pod on Connecting Kansas City. Welcome. Hi. Oh my gosh, it's so weird to hear someone read my bio back to me. <laughs> yes. How's it feel to have the, the roles reversed and you're the interviewee instead of the interviewer today? I mean, I was telling you I'm nervous. And I was thinking when people tell me that they're nervous to do an interview, I'm like, oh no, you'll be fine. It's easy. Now I know how they feel. It's the same way in real estate. When you sell your own house, you're like, oh, now I understand why my sellers are always anxious wrecks. Like, <laughs> for sure. So pretty recently, back, well, I guess coming up on a year back in Kansas City now. So how when you started this TV journey, was that always the goal to come back to Kansas City? Or was it kind of just a happy coincidence that you ended up here? Honestly, I kind of have just been going with the flow. Um I, I started out, like you said, in St. Joseph, so I was close to home, and luckily enough, during the pandemic, I could come home all the time with my and see my parents and see my family. Um, and then going to Green Bay, I had no idea that I was going to make my way back home. It kind of just fell into my lap one day, and I feel so lucky because KSHB is the, is the station that my family grew up watching, and we always used to say, oh, wouldn't it be cool if you did that one day? Wouldn't it be cool if we were watching you at dinner? And now my parents do. And I, I still, it's even a year later, it's still kind of hard for me to wrap my head around that I'm in my hometown. I'm working here. I'm on my favorite station. It all seems really surreal. I'm trying to, I'm kind of trying to stay in the present with everything right now, just because I feel so lucky to be home. Can you walk people through, I'm familiar with the industry. What does a typical day as a reporter look like? And like, what kind of schedules do you guys have? Because no one works, well, very few people work like a Monday through Friday, eight to five. What's what's kind of like a day-to-day -day life, day -day life like for a news reporter? Yeah, I definitely don't work uh, an eight to five, Monday through Friday. I'm Tuesday through Saturday. I'm a nine to five, nine to six-ish, Tuesday through Friday. And then on Saturdays, I work the night side shift. So that's about from two o'clock in the afternoon till 1030, 11 o'clock-ish. Um, a typical day for me is I wake up on a very ideal day. I have a story set up, ready to go, put together so that I can hop on my morning meeting, say, yeah, I'm doing X, Y, Z, and I'm going to that you know, heading there at 11 o'clock to meet them. Other days, like last week when um, uh, Ford and the UAW came to um, a tentative agreement, 
you know, that was one of those things. My news director texted me at eight o'clock and was like, hey, we're going to put you on this, start reaching out to people. So you really just, <laughs> you go through your old decks and you reach out to anyone you can, anyone you think that would make a good story for this. Um, and so usually in the mornings until about one o'clock, that's collecting stories. So that's um, working with my photographer, shooting stuff, um, doing any stand-ups that I need to do. So anytime you see me on camera, that's the stand-up portion of it. Um, collecting any sound, um, me actually logging, sitting down and going through the interview that I did with that person. And then my whole afternoon is just kind of putting it all together. I like to have my stuff done by like, you know, an hour and a half before ideally, because your photographer is the one who puts the whole thing together and makes the beautiful piece that you see on TV in the end. So I like to give them time to do that and let their creativity shine through too. But it's definitely packed. You know, there's very rarely, rarely time to eat. I, you know, I have to pre-plan all my meals, bring them with me because I won't get the opportunity to usually, um, unless it's a really slow day. But yeah, by the time I'm done with work, um, after the after the piece has been on and after I've uh, done the digital portion of it, so written the article online, um, when I head home, I crash. <laughs> and it's such a social job. I live alone and I'm so lucky. It's such a social job because living with a roommate or living with anyone, I would just not be a nice person afterward. Mm -hmm. You're just so drained because you put you really put all of yourself out there mm -hmm. during the day. Yeah. And a lot of days, this topic that you're covering isn't necessarily a pleasant one. So you're having to ask really emotional questions of people. How do you balance that? Like some of these like true tragedies that you just have to like get up in the morning and dive in the middle of someone's worst day of their life. Right. What's that like? And does it ever get any easier? Oh gosh. I don't think it gets any easier. I am kind of coming around to that more. Um, in Green Bay, I started reporting more in St. Joe. I was an anchor more. And then, of course, here in um, Kansas City, I'm reporting more. And so I, during COVID, especially when I was in St. Joe, um, we'd have to get up on the desk. It would just be like me and like a few other people, but no one else in the station that like in the heart of it, when we were really serious going through it, stay at home orders. And um, I remember talking about, you know, there are so and so many deaths right now there are so and so many people in the hospital there are x y and z amount of beds left and that was a super scary time just because we didn't know what we were having to we didn't know what we were really talking about for the most part we didn't know how serious this was going to be and how how much it would affect us and um you kind of have to sit up there and deliver it professionally and not break down that happens <laughs> off camera but it's a really it's really hard to uh, report that news and bring it forward but I mean yeah especially with unbelievable the amount of homicides Kansas City has seen in the past year talking to families it's it's such a balancing act because obviously you don't want to push a camera in their face immediately after something like this but it also gives so much light and so much awareness to issues that are happening in Kansas City and puts a face to the name and humanizes this story. Because we can talk about, hey, there's been 98 deaths in Kansas City. I know there's been a lot more. I just can't think of the number off the top of my head. There's been 98 some homicides in Kansas City. Putting a face to one of those and the, how the family is impacted by it, I think that's just the most... I think that's the best thing we can do and just show that this is there are real people behind this. They're not just statistics, not just statistics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Do you ever find it challenging to be covering um, like controversial things being from here? Like, I feel like it's a little bit easier, maybe in a different city where your family's not watching and not going to be polarized by it. But here it's like, OK, there are like actual repercussions to what you're covering that people are going to have opinions about when you go home, you know, for Thanksgiving or whatever. What, what's that been like for you? That's a great question. I I try to – my goal, obviously, in all journalist school is to be a, as unbiased as possible. So when we're doing those stories, you know, if you say one side, you have to say another. It's a huge balancing act. And for myself, I, I'm lucky I haven't had to cover such, um, you know, politically controversial topics. Um, but, I mean, 
it's kind of like I'm my own person too. So especially when I when I talk to my family about it, I think it's so important for everyone to have these different perspectives. That's what mm -hmm. you know our world is about. Everyone having their opinions about things and definitely makes for some fun dinner table Thanksgiving conversations. That's for sure. But you know, I think that discourse is really really important. I think that's why the news is great because. We people need to be aware of everything going on, even if you don't agree with it. I watch so many stations where I don't agree with everything they're saying, but I think it's important that you hear that too, because if you don't and you're funneling into this one viewpoint of something, you're just never going to get the full story. I just don't think you can comprehend and understand one thing unless you see both sides of it. Mm -hmm. Because I think that a lot of people lose sight of that, that like the vast majority of journalists, especially at the local level, truly are like have hearts of gold and just want to like get the facts out there and like sure at the corporate and national levels there's like politics and nasty stuff involved yeah. but like at our like local news level it's just like people from here running to tell stories about our community and it is so hard to put yourself out there like that uh like I remember so I was a sports reporter so I did not have to do this stuff very often but at my very first market I was living in my dad's hometown in Nebraska. It's a town of like 600 people. And there was a guy that was walking through town carrying like 85 guns strapped across his body because you're like making some political point. I really can't remember if he was like pro guns or anti guns at this point. I really don't remember now. But it was news because it's this tiny town. So I called my news director and I was like, do you want me to like talk to this guy? And like, so I did and took a picture of him. And the hate that I got from just being like, this is a thing that happened and this is this man's point. I was so, because I'm a sports, I mean, I work in sports. So I was like, what? I, this is, I just want to talk about like high school football again. I'm so over this. Like yeah. how have you had people like out in the field come up to you and like and be angry with you about something you said or something, something you put on air ever? And like, how do you deal with that? First of all, I'm so sorry that happened to you because I can... I, I can't say I relate because no one's ever specifically come up to me and said something, but definitely if you go on Facebook or Twitter after your story's been published, the people that are saying these things and it, it just it just blows my mind that, you know, if you don't want to watch it, then don't watch it, you know, go somewhere else and watch what you want to watch, watch when you want to believe, but you can't even take a second to read the full story through and kind of see where we're coming from because yeah, for... You make a good point at the local versus national level. The local reporters are truly like advocates for their city. I mean, we all work in Kansas City and are staying, majority of us are staying here because we love it so much. We just want to share what's out there and make sure that every no one knows what's going on from the horrible stuff to the awesome stuff. And we've had mm -hmm. a lot of awesome stuff, but we've also had a lot of horrible stuff. And um, it's just... Yeah, it's it's just this balancing act every day, and it's still something that I work on too. Um, yeah. As far as you know, keeping my opinions out of things, at least in my head, and but also being able to share what people should know, even if that's not a something I agree with on a personal level. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. It's such a weird time in Kansas City because we do have this like horrible like gun violence problem going on that's getting worse every year. But then meanwhile. Kansas City is having a moment like like yeah. all of the national and worldwide stuff we're getting in Kansas City. What's it like working in Kansas City where it's like every single week we're having like new announcement, this new development, this new thing is coming here. And especially being someone that's from here originally and then now coming back at this time where we're just like on such a national and worldwide stage. It's it, it's unreal. I mean, I remember going up, I, I, I went to camp up in Minnesota and people would say, you're from Kansas? What's in Kansas? What do you do? Do you ride, a, you ride a horse to school? Just knowing nothing about Kansas City or Missouri. My favorite question that people ask me, um, the kind of um, people who are know-it-alls when I say I'm from Kansas City, are you from Kansas City, Kansas? Or are you from Kansas City, Missouri? And I'm like, okay, well, calm down. <laughs> but um, it, is, it is so cool. I feel like it's, you know we really like hit a stride Kansas City has and I'm I feel so lucky to be here and be able to report on all of it not just you know the Chiefs and uh Sporting KDC is doing so many good things right now I mean Kansas City you're right it's really happening like it's having such a moment
And of course, we are having a moment because like the queen of the world is dating a pseudo adopted Kansas Cityan. Uh, As a pop culture junkie and a news girly, what does having Tay Tay, Taylor Swift flying in and out of Kansas City for Chiefs games, what's that been like for you? And have you gotten to do more like pop culture stories because of this? I haven't, but that's something I really want to get into is trying to make pop culture and things like this news in a way that's still something I'm trying to wrap my head around because like you said I'm I'm a huge junkie with this stuff I'm constantly on the Daily Mail and page six and all that it is so weird that Taylor Swift is here I kind of have to pinch myself even from the beginning when we heard that she was dating Travis Kelsey air quotes dating you know I didn't believe that I was like whatever there's no way no way and even when she showed up to that first game I still said uh, we'll see. Maybe if she comes to another game, like, maybe we'll talk. And then it's been, what, four now? It's so weird. I think it's so it's so much fun because you, I listen to so many pop culture podcasts and you hear people talk about Kansas City and they say, yeah, and then they went to Prime Social and then they got Jack Stack Barbecue, whatever that is. And it's like, yeah, that's that's my hometown. That's That's where I am right now. It's unreal. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. I was on the plaza this weekend and I was like, I'm breathing the same air she breathed not that long ago. Like it's I so saw, wild. I saw Brittany Mahomes at a event for the Casey Current when they unveiled the name of the stadium. And for a second, it ran through my head. I'm near Brittany, which means she's been near Taylor. So I've been near Taylor now. <laughs> and I'm not even, I love her music. I, I love anything. I didn't get to go to the concert, but I'm not even like this huge Swifty, but this is making me honestly a bigger Swifty. Yeah, it's crazy, especially those of uh, like we're probably I'm a little bit older than you, but we're roughly the same age growing up when the Chiefs were so bad. Yeah. And like the thought of them making the Super Bowl was laughable. And yeah. like if you could tell like little girl us like, oh, by the way, not only will they have won two Super Bowls, Taylor Swift is a regular guest at Chiefs mm-hmm. games. It's like it's is an out of body experience. It's crazy. It really is. I'm Yeah. And that's the coolest thing about the, the Chiefs right now is they've just they've hit this stride and I just, I I hope it continues for so long. I will never forget growing up and just hearing my dad yell at the TV. I mean, we used to all, you know, be embarrassed to have this team, but look at us now. I mean, you go anywhere in the country, you go out of the country, for example, Germany, they're going to Germany next week. I mean, you go out of the country, you'll see people wearing chief stuff. It's become everyone's favorite team. And now I think with Travis, and Taylor more and more people are hopping on and they're just it's they've done a lot of good things for this team right now too yeah absolutely so since you've been back in Kansas City the last year I guess do you have a favorite story that you've covered over the past year oh gosh I knew you were gonna ask me this and I was I was thinking it through I won't lie I really really the first one that comes to mind is the story I did with you and I'm not just saying that because I'm on your podcast (laughs) today but I thought that was one of the coolest more unique stories I've done for reference we were doing a story about how during the time when TikTok was maybe going to get banned um I wanted to find someone who is benefiting from TikTok and you know if this happens it would really really impact their um work life and of course I found Rachel and (laughs) the story we did together it was just so cool and seeing how you've taken a platform that I mean so many have done the same thing but you've made it so local to Kansas City and shown that like Kansas Cityans can do it too and shown how cool Kansas City is. Honestly, before it was even this cool as it is right now, you've been the major advocate for it. Um, I just loved, you know, I loved hearing about it and seeing how what your day looks like and seeing how you put one together and how you come up with an idea because coming up with those ideas I know those are the that's the hardest thing to do is come up with a story idea coming up with the TikTok idea that's potentially harder it's like the same piece of my brain though it's like it was such a smooth transition from TV I mean I did sales for a couple years after TV before this but it is it's kind of the same creative thinking process of like okay what's this topic for like for you for news reporter like okay so that this the politicians want to ban tiktok how do i make that like relatable to the average viewer and for me it's like here's this trending sound how do i make that relatable to like the average kansas city it's like the exact same piece of the brain but it's it's i think people don't realize like how skilled tv reporters are especially at the local level to be able to pull stuff together like that find local contacts for it all within like a few hours 
And do you still shoot and edit ever? Or like, when's the last time you shot your own story? Um, I shot my own story a few weeks ago, actually. I went to St. Louis to do a story kind of Royals adjacent. Um, and I won't lie to you, I did a lot of it on my phone. These iPhone cameras, they are fabulous. Um, Cause I mean, and you'd be shocked at how much of the stuff you see on TV right now that you think is on a professional camera and it's off of the phone. But going back to what you were saying about the local and national, we're, we try our best, and that's kind of what I've been trying to do more is make these topics that so many of us talk about and so many of us hear about on a day-to-day basis, um, try to humanize them. Like I just did a story last week. Um, a study came out um, in Independence. They did one talking about how the royals moving out of Independence is going to hurt business. So instead of just laying out, you know, making it kind of a boring thing, laying out the details of it and the numbers that no one really minds to look at. And after the story airs, it goes in one ear and out the other. I did a story with Dixon's Famous Chili, where I've never been before. But like like the name, they're famous. They have such a strong following. Uh, fourth generation, he owns it and runs it right now. And he said, yeah, People make it a tradition before, after Royals games to come in here and get chili. If they were to move, that was really hurt me. And I need to think of next steps, you know, right now, even though we have 10, eight years down the line. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so interesting. Probably that um, Gates location too. Same thing for them, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Okay. Well, last two questions I'm going to ask you here. I ask everyone that comes on the show. Uh-oh. First one is, what is a great meal that you've had recently in Kansas City? Great meal that I've had recently in Kansas City. Oh, gosh. I've had a lot of great meals in Kansas City in the past few weeks. Um, I, honestly, I might have to say last night, um, my my younger brother's in town. And I was over at dinner with my parents. And we love getting Jack Stack barbecue out. But um, we have a, a family friend, Mitch Benjamin, who owns Meet Mitch. And I... Not even, again, being biased, but I think Meat Mitch is one of the best barbecues in the city. I think it's so good. I mean, just the way he does everything is just fantastic. That was probably one of my favorite meals. You know, it was like burn ends, pulled pork, all the fixins. Um, His sauces are truly what makes it too. He has this barbecue mustard that's just, mwah, it's unbelievable. I could eat it on anything. I'll put it on a salad. Like, it's that. It's so good. Yeah, I've had it. And you're the second person that said that. So you have to report really? back to, to Mitch that he's popular among the podcast good. guests. Yeah. And you know they have an airport location too, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I talked to him when the airport first opened just kind of about that um, and how it's going. It's so cool because he it started as a hobby and now it's um, something that's grown to this this big, big thing. I mean, I could see him taking it out of Kansas City. You should have him on. He'd be really good. Really good. Case. I would love to. Would love to. Actually, yeah. If you, yeah, if, hip, hip, connect us. I would love to do that. Oh, sure. l- one more question. As someone that grew up in Kansas City, did you have any crossover with Gary Lezak at KSHB? And did you fangirl when you met him? <laughs> I had a little bit of crossover. I got there in October. He left in December. So I got to know him a little bit, but I was also on mornings. So I worked in the opposite schedule as him. But he truly is the same guy that you see on TV, the sweetest person, knows everyone by name, and just an all-around funny, super creative, awesome guy. And yes, I and, did girl. <laughs> and I used to work with Mick Schaefer, so yeah. how much trouble does Mick cause in the newsroom? Oh my God, so much. He's running around all the time. No, I'm kidding. That's, that's what I figured. That's what I figured. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last question for you. Where can people find you on social media? On the internet? On KSHB? Where can they find all things Caroline? Oh, yay. Um, my Instagram is at the Caroline Hogan. I try to post, um, you know, I post a lot of pop culture stuff. I like to, you know, post all the news there. But I also do, um, you know, throw in some national news too because I want to make sure that people know what everything is going on. Uh, not just in Kansas City, but in the world. Um, my Twitter is Caroline Hogan TV. Um, don't really have a TikTok. Those two are my major ones. Um, yeah. Facebook, I think it's Caroline Hogan TV. If you're on, if anyone's on Facebook here and wants to find me there, for sure. Um, and then on KSHB, I'm on the four, five, and six o'clock shows Tuesday through Friday. I'm on the ten o'clock on Saturdays. I love it. Okay, we'll be watching. Thanks for being here. I really Thank appreciate you so it so much. I loved this. It's so fun. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.